The past few days have been a bloodbath for Battlefield. Sony is going to be paying Bungie's employees big money, Dying Light 2 reviews are in, and much more on Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Level Cap here, and in case you haven't already heard, Battlefield 2042's February update has been delayed to early March. This is the update that will add the new scoreboard and other changes DICE were working on over the holiday break. They said that the extra time will ensure a quality update goes live and has some additional changes that wouldn't have made it in otherwise. DICE dealt a massive blow to the community earlier this week by announcing that the Season 1 update wouldn't launch until summer, and the EA's investor call didn't exactly rub the Battlefield 2042 community the right way either. In the call, EA confirmed that the game was an underwhelming disappointment for them and that the Battlefield franchise only accounts for 10% of their portfolio right now. They reaffirmed that DICE has a strong track record with fixing their games too. And DICE have indeed pulled off massive comebacks with multiple games in the past, but that doesn't mean that it'll necessarily work for 2042. Only time will tell in this regard. The one bright spot of the investor call was EA confirming Battlefield's new leadership is their way of kickstarting improvements. The publisher replaced several senior executives at DICE with Vince Zampella and other prominent figures. Zampella is now head of the Battlefield franchise, and in recent years he's successfully led Respawn to two major hits, Apex Legends and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It's tough to say what Zampella's goals are with Battlefield. He's clearly a competent leader, considering that every project he's led gets rave reviews from critics. Both Titanfall games were well regarded and laid the groundwork for Apex's juggernaut success despite failing to be smash hits commercially, and this certainly suggests that he could do a lot to get DICE back on track. Now regarding what's actually happening with Battlefield 2042, the map Renewal is now back in rotation for last gen console players. DICE disabled it shortly after the game's most recent update because it had caused significant stability problems on those consoles. DICE has also released a hotfix to resolve the crashing issue that has recently cropped up on all platforms. EA's investor call wasn't all doom and gloom. They announced Skate 4 is launching soon and will offer user-generated content. CEO Andrew Wilson spoke about user-generated content in games like The Sims. He said that it's at the very center of the Skate franchise as that game will be launching soon. And we've seen next to nothing in terms of actual gameplay yet. EA released a trailer showcasing some motion capture work for the game late last year, and that's the only meaningful footage released since the project was announced. Sony bought up Destiny and former Halo developer Bungie for a cool $3.6 billion earlier this week. The deal leaves Bungie to operate as an independent studio and their future titles will remain multi-platform. Compared to the acquisition Microsoft has been making with the Xbox brand, the deal is barely a blip, but it's still a massive purchase of a highly respected studio. Mergers and acquisitions like this often lead to massive turnover at the company being bought out. Senior executives and employees usually usually take their payday and move on to a new company, but it seems like Sony wants Bungie to keep as many employees as possible. $1.2 billion of the purchase is going towards incentives that will help Bungie retain its current staff for several years. Star Citizen's roadmap is dropping long-term development projections. The developers announced the change in a blog post. They said that including goals that are months or even years away from being finished was causing too much frustration for players. They emphasized that the progress tracker is what players should be focused on when it comes to new features and development progress. The release view, aka roadmap, will now be limited to features coming within the next three months. A new closed beta for the upcoming reboot of the Extraction Royale The Cycle, titled The Cycle Frontier, is kicking off next month. The original game launched a couple of years ago to positive reviews, we've even made a few videos about it. It was a PvE-focused Extraction Royale that offered multiple ways of winning a match, including through PvP if you desired. The reboot it seems much darker in tone and adds persistent elements to make the match-to-match -match progression more meaningful. In terms of new content, there are new faction campaigns, quests, monsters, and tons of tweaks to the map design. The beta goes live on March 10th for PC. Rocksteady's Suicide Squad game has reportedly been delayed into next year. Bloomberg are saying the next game by the developers of the Batman Arkham franchise is being delayed for an unknown reason. It was revealed in 2020 with a 2022 release date, but the pandemic likely caused significant delays for the title. The entire video game industry has been hit hard by COVID. It's unclear whether the Suicide Squad game has been delayed or not. It's also unclear how deep into the next year it supposedly has been pushed back. 
Reviews of Dying Light 2 are in, and they paint a pretty typical picture for a AAA game launch. Pre-release versions of the game given to reviewers are buggy and have major performance issues. Developers are saying that the game's day one patch fixes thousands of problems, but that's not really helping reviewers who say they can't even get the game to launch. Those who do get it working say that it's an entertaining expansion on the original game that massively adds to the scale and depth. Many reviews are also highly critical of the game's story and writing. The first game, however, didn't really win any awards for storytelling either. Overall, the reviewers have praised the gameplay and general world that Techland have delivered. And that more or less seems to be the bread and butter of the game as well, so it's good to hear that they got the important stuff right. Dying Light 2 launches tomorrow. Halo Infinite's roadmap has been delayed. In November, the game's creative director Joseph Staten said that the devs would reveal their post-launch timeline in January. Obviously, it's now February and there's still no roadmap. Staten announced on Twitter that they're currently finalizing their plan for the game and will launch the roadmap ASAP. That roadmap is expected to include the release dates for two key features, campaign co-op and forge mode. Both modes are franchise staples. Infinite launched with the expectation that they would release alongside seasonal updates for the multiplayer. Valve just announced the next CSGO Major. It kicks off on May 9th in Antwerp, Belgium. And while this is great news for fans of the CSGO esports scene, it's also a little concerning. The Major will be run by PGL again. They hosted the previous Major in Stockholm to mixed reviews. Major technical issues with the broadcast plagued the first few days of the event, and many viewers complained about the poor in-game camera work, audio problems, match delays, and more. They eventually sorted things out, and the event ended on a high note with longtime fans and favorite team Navi winning. But the overall production was still a bit of a letdown compared to past events. Hopefully PGL has things under control for the Antwerp Major. Before we get to our final start today, I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in. What are some of your highlights from today's coverage? Let us know in the comments. The Nintendo Switch is officially Team Red's most successful home console. Its latest sales figures beat the Wii's lifetime sales by nearly 3 million units at 103 million total. And despite its current popularity, the Switch was a massive question mark for Nintendo before its launch. The Wii U had flopped dramatically and the Switch was so out there that it seemed like it could have followed in the same footsteps. But in classic Nintendo fashion, it turns out that pretty much just every other one of their consoles is a massive hit. They say that the Switch is currently in the middle of its life cycle, so we're probably still a ways off from any new hardware announcement. That said, rumors of a Switch Pro have still been buzzing for years, and Nintendo did launch an OLED version of the Switch with an improved screen last year, but that's been the only major hardware revision to the console aside from the Switch Lite, and neither of those models have faster internal hardware. And if the Switch is only halfway through its life cycle, it seems like an upgraded model could really be useful to keep third-party titles playable on Nintendo's aging hardware. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.